I have climbed Mount Kilimanjaro. I have been diving with hammerhead sharks in the Galapagos Islands. I have jumped out of an aeroplane in Australia. So I would say I'm an adventure tourist. Adventure tourism is fun, it's exciting and it's growing. And in today's video, I'm going to tell you why. What can we do to be an adventure tourist? What are some of the really cool things we can do? And why is this industry growing so fast? If you're new here, my name's Dr. Hayley Sainton and I've got a ton of videos all about different types of tourism and the tourism industry. So do subscribe to learn more about travel and tourism. So let's start off. What is this adventure tourism exactly? Adventure tourism is tourism that involves any kind of activity or adventure. It especially relates to those that involve risk or require some extensive planning. The Adventure Travel Trade Association defines it as a tourist activity that includes physical activity, cultural exchange or activities in nature. Meanwhile, Sung et al. describe it as the sum of the phenomena and relationships arising from the interactions of adventure touristic activities with the natural environment away from the participant's usual place of residence area and containing elements of risk in which the outcome is influenced by the participation setting and the organiser of the tourist experience. Ultimately, adventure tourism is all about adventure! Oh, I've just remembered another one. I went zip lining in Costa Rica. Now that was cool. Anyway, adventure is a pretty broad term and it encompasses lots of things. And ultimately, it's a bit subjective too, because what I think is an adventure, I think zip lining through the jungle is an adventure. You might not. So it, there is an inherent level of subjectivity there, but nonetheless, it is an important type of tourism, an important type of niche tourism that is growing fast. There are lots of opportunities, not only to be an adventure tourist, but to have a business in the adventure tourism industry. But how has this all come about? What is, what is the history of adventure tourism? Of course, people have been traveling for centuries. The history of tourism is a long and fruitful one. Over the years, travel evolved into tourism. And now we can see lots of different branches of tourism. We can trace the roots of adventure tourism specifically back perhaps to as early as 569 AD, when Alboin, king of the Lombards, climbed Matadur in the Alps. Adventure tourism is all about doing something with a bit of risk and putting planning into it. We don't know how much preparation Alboin put into this exhibition or whether it was some sort of off-the-cuff climb, but it can still be seen as an early example of adventure tourism. Climbing mountains at this time was generally a practical or symbolic activity. It was usually done for economic, political or religious reasons. However, in the 1800s, adventurers pushed the limits more and more. It became a formal sport and people did it for fun. Other adventurous activities such as caving, river rafting, abseiling and gorge walking emerged as a fun way to pass the time. As people got more into these sorts of things, these activities formed part of the adventure tourism industry. Organisations such as the Nat Geo and the Explorers Club, as well as Boy Scouts and Girl Guides to an extent, were also established. These have always promoted and supported adventure tourism. In recent years, consumer desires have evolved and many people have or are moving away from that traditional sun, sea and sand package holiday model and instead they are seeking an alternative experience. There are a wide range of types of tourism that people are embracing more these days. And one example of this is adventure tourism. There are more adventure tourism companies than ever before, including travel agents and tour operators who specialize in this field. So, as I said before, adventure tourism is quite a broad term and it can actually be broken down into two categories, hard and soft. Hard adventure tourism, as the name suggests, refers to activities which are typically more high risk. They require intense training, changes in diet, lots of practice, a guide, and so on. And soft adventure tourism activities are the opposite. 
They are much less risky and don't require the long-term commitment that hard adventure tourism activities often would. They are often led by a guide, but you can do this sort of thing without too. Generally, these are much more popular as they are easier activities and have much lower risk. So let's take a look at what these activities are then. There are a wide range of adventure tourism activities. The list is endless really. But here are a few examples of hard adventure tourism. Mountaineering or mountain climbing, caving, ice climbing, rock climbing, skydiving, trekking or intense hiking, free diving, extreme biking. And here are some examples of soft adventure tourism activities. There's bird watching, scuba diving, horse riding, kayaking or rafting, skiing, orienteering, going on safari, canoeing, fishing, hiking, snorkeling, hunting, surfing, snowboarding, and ecotourism activities. And as you will know if you have watched any of my other videos on the types of tourism is I always like to weigh up what are the good things and what are the bad things about this type of tourism. So let's do it. There are many benefits of adventure tourism. One huge benefit is that it is so much fun. Trying something new or even doing something you already enjoy is a brilliant way to spend your time while you are traveling. Gaining a new skill or honing in on one that you've been learning for ages is such a sense of achievement. This is particularly true for activities that require physical hard work such as skiing or training like mountain climbing. Adventure tourism is growing fast and with that comes job creation. This is definitely a benefit of any type of tourism. Jobs are created for guides and instructors, for people who work in the booking department of tourism companies, for people working in hotels or restaurants in areas that people may not otherwise visit. All of this means the economy is growing and the industry is thriving, resulting in positive economic impacts of tourism. Local communities are supported by all forms of tourism and adventure tourism is no exception. Furthermore, due to the rise and popularity of ecotourism and the ongoing conversations around sustainability, adventure tourism companies are often dedicated to protecting the environment. Though it may seem like these activities could be harmful, they are often not. This is because companies ensure the activities they offer are respectful to the planet too. It also allows more people to fall in love with the outdoors. But naturally, there are some disadvantages too, and it's important that the tourism industry tries to minimize these. Nothing is black and white, of course, and points on both sides are incredibly nuanced. Whilst these activities are fun, and it's a great chance to try something new, they can be dangerous. Hard adventure tourism activities are considered high risk, Many of these activities will require you to sign a disclaimer, like skydiving, and they won't be covered by your insurance. And for some, you need months, if not years, of training. To climb Mount Everest, for example, you need a permit. With the fees on top, this will set you back around $20,000 before you even buy any equipment. There are strict criteria to be granted a permit too. And even though many adventure tourism companies are looking out for the planet, Individuals often are not. There is no guarantee that visitors will always be respectful to the local environment and the local community. From standing on things they shouldn't to dropping litter, there are many negatives that we can see from an increased footfall. There could also be cultural and social impacts. With more visitors, locals may see some sort of loss to their cultural heritage over time and this can be really devastating. With more tourists in place, especially during the peak season, people's roles in society will naturally change and the status quo can be affected. Okay, so adventure tourism is exciting, adventure tourism is fun, but where? Where can we go for adventure tourism? I'm going to finish off this video by giving you some examples of adventure tourism in action. Adventure tourism in India. Adventure tourism is a big deal in India. The diverse and spectacular country has so much to offer. 
and one of the big draws there is hiking and trekking. There are plenty of incredible places to hike in India. Gentle hikes or treks are a soft form of adventure tourism, while some more intense treks and hikes can fall into the hard category. Uttarakhand is one of the best places to hike in India. The Rupkund trek is a famous trek around Rupkund Lake, which is surrounded by hundreds of human skeletons. Other examples of adventure tourism in India include surfing in Kovalam, skiing in Oli, and white water rafting in Rishikesh. Adventure tourism in Iceland. Beautiful Iceland is one of the most popular places for visiting the Northern Lights. This in itself is a bit of an adventure, but there are all sorts of other things you can do too, which come under this type of tourism. You can snorkel or scuba dive in Silfafisha, for example, or go inside a dormant volcano at Thrinakayigia. I totally cannot pronounce that. I'm sorry. Adventure tourism in Costa Rica. It is impossible to be bored in a place like Costa Rica. This country has so much to offer and it is an example of somewhere that, to most of us, is pretty exotic. Head deep into the jungle on your adventure to see some colourful wildlife. Visit the Costa Rica volcanoes and cloud forests. Go rafting and hiking and ziplining and so much more. You can book 10 day trips that encompass all of these things or you could stay somewhere peaceful and relax for most of your holiday and throw in the odd bit of adventure tourism here and there. Adventure tourism in New Zealand. Said by some to be the home of adventure tourism, New Zealand is a must for anyone considering this type of trip. With so much space and such a sparse population, is it any wonder that this lovely little country is home to so much adventure? Admire the views from up high by skydiving in different locations or raft on the highest commercially rafted waterfall in the world in Road to Rua. From caving to off-road driving to heli skiing, there is so much choice in New Zealand. So, there we have it. Adventure tourism is fun, it's exciting. And if you're into adventure tourism, you might want to consider some of these types of tourism too. If you have enjoyed this video, make sure you do subscribe and watch some more. I've got lots, I've got lots more just like this.